So one of our members recently posted about a man whom she met who seems like a really great guy, except he has some issues with his hygiene and his, um, and his car is filthy. So I wanted to lean into this conversation because I once had a therapist tell me that, um, that behaviors can be modified personality can't be changed. So in this particular case, a man who has weak hygiene and a dirty car is a behavior. And that is certainly something that can be changed over time. The real challenge is, are they really going to change those behaviors? Because quite frankly, I think cleanliness, both in one's hygiene and certainly the way they present their home, the way they present their car, gives you an indication of how cluttered their life might be or how unclean their life might be. The thing is though, there are circumstances where a person can change. So for example, when I moved in with my sweetheart, there's a picture of her and I right there. You know, I wasn't always the cleanest person. I wouldn't always put things away. When you live by yourself, you might have a habit of leaving the dishes unclean for a day or two. That was my habit, um, although I always made my bed. Um, and, I, and when we moved in together, that was something that she made a request that we always, before we go to bed, make sure we wake up to a clean kitchen. kitchen. So that was certainly something I could change or I could certainly modify in my life as a request for my partner. Um, but when we talk about the differences between modifying a behavior versus changing a personality, the reality is, is there are some personality traits that it's not our responsibility to change for them, nor are they even capable of changing those personalities. For example, narcissistic behavior. Somebody who is self-centric, self-centered, myopic in their life that they only focus on themselves, that's a behavior that's going to require a tremendous amount, or excuse me, yeah, that's a, that's a personality trait that's going to take a tremendous amount of individual work and introspective work to actually begin to change that within someone's life. So when we think about the dating, mating, and relating, I want to differentiate between things like their character, kindness, fun and play, uh, intentionality, versus things like, um, okay, so those are things where it's, you know, someone's character isn't really a, a generous person. It's very rare that they're going to change that part of their personality if they're not generous, if they're not kind. Now, the root of this might have happened from a childhood wound or trauma that makes it very difficult for them to actually lean into changing that. Now, another thing that can't be changed is a person's height. OK, that's something that can't be changed. Their eye color can't be changed. However, someone's physical appearance can be changed. In other words, a person can lose weight. A person could start eating healthier. Those are things that actually can change. So if you met a guy who's maybe a little bit pudgy, that's something that can be changed. That can be modified um, by shifting diet. OK, now, the thing is about the cleanliness, you know, to me, that's not a good sign. Is that a red flag? Yeah, that's a red flag because if a person hits 62 years old, as in this particular case, and unless it's situational where maybe in the particular case, that particular day, he didn't get a chance to shower, he worked out and rushed out to see the person, which I doubt that's the case you know, that could be a reflection of their hygiene or if their car was messy because they just moved someone, they were helping move someone, that could be situational. However, my, my sense is these were certain behaviors for this person that is relatively ingrained. Now, the challenge with those of us in midlife is the older people get, the more set they are in their ways. And unless they have a significant humbling event in their life, when a man goes through a humbling event in, event in his life, it might put him on a path of growth. It might put him on a path of self-discovery. Or what oftentimes happens when people have a humbling event and they're unable to cope with that humbling event, they begin to lean to drugs and alcohol as a way to self-medicate a humbling event. So for example, in my particular case, I had two major humbling events happen in my life. 
in, uh, in uh, you know, after going through a divorce, I found myself, I lost my quarter million dollar year job. That directly ident affected my identity. And in that humbling event, I found that I was a, my personality was a bit selfish, even though I had a generous nature, I had a selfish nature as well. And in that, I began to change my personality of being a little bit selfish. And then by little by little over time, I had this major humbling event. And little by little over time, over about a five to 10 year period, I became more compassionate, more empathetic, more giving, more caring. And certainly by the time I lost my son, and there's a picture of my son right there who passed away, that's Connor. When I, my son passed away, a huge humbling event. It actually encouraged me to start exploring what does it mean to love oneself, but more importantly, what does it mean to love others? This is why I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. By the way, there's a link below to get a copy of my book. By going through these experiences, my, my personality began to change. My, my behaviors began to change, but I needed a significant humbling event. So in the case of the person whose hygiene and uh, car isn't clean, you know, it could be that maybe this person needs a wake up call. Maybe this person needs to be told like, look, you know, point blank in a kind, loving way, say, look, Tim or whatever his name is. You seem like a really good person with good character. And I've noticed that you don't seem to take care of yourself, both in your physical appearance and in the things you have in your life. And it's okay if I ask you, what's up with that? <laughs> you know, like it's okay. By the way, folks, it's okay to ask these questions. It's okay to say, I noticed that you don't seem to take care of yourself from a cleanliness perspective. And certainly your car seems like it's not something that's well kept. Can you share with me as it's coming up? Now, in this particular case, this person had a trauma in his childhood where um, his mother, I believe, committed suicide when he was 16 years old. Well, that's a traumatic event. It's not a humbling event. It's a traumatic event. And in that particular case, and I don't know to the extent of healing and therapy he's done, certainly it's been something like 46 years since that experience. It might have caused him to, to withdraw within and not be capable of a significant relationship. And then you have to ask yourself, is this really a capacity of his hygiene and his car as an example? Or is this something even deeply rooted in his incapacity to actually be to care for someone else in his life? Because it seems like he doesn't care for himself. Now, it might be that you bring this to his attention and he, if he values you, he might make a change. That's quite a possibility. I highly doubt it, though, because it's such an ingrained part of his behavior. But that's certainly a possibility, just like when I started to clean the kitchen every single night before we went to bed. We take turns, by the way. Um, but deeply ingrained behaviors are oftentimes either need a humbling event or it needs the awareness for this person to see. Sometimes people aren't aware that that behavior within themselves is actually present. So by merely bring it to his attention, it might shift the behavior, might not. But when we talk about personality, folks, I think this is really critically important. Does their actions match their words? That's a really important aspect of a person's personality. Do they have victor consciousness or do they have victim consciousness? Sadly, here in the United States, we are suckling on the nipple of victim consciousness. It's easier to blame others instead of taking ownership for one's position in life. I think another personality trait that's critically important is good conflict resolution skills. Good conflict resolution. In other words, if someone brings up an issue, do they have the capacity to listen to your point of view, acknowledge your point of view, and more importantly, express their own point of view in a non-defensive way, or at least not in a power struggle way, because your point of view is true for you. 
You know, conflict resolution skills is one of the critically important personality traits for an effective, healthy, happy relationship. In addition is, um, is the ability to be empathetic. And empathetic isn't just, I can feel your feelings. Empathetic is, I care about my feelings too. And more importantly, your feelings matter to me. That's a level of empathy and then transparency in one's life. Can a person be transparent? And what I mean to say is if something is material to the relationship, it's important for couples to speak up. And so in this particular case, whether she's gone on with them a couple dates, I think it's quite, listen, folks, rather than have a passive approach to dating and relationships, how about an intentional approach? That demonstrates a level of emotional maturity when you can approach the process from an intentional place. What does that mean is we're like, look, we're spending time together to get to know one another. Why are we getting to know one another? Why are we dating? It's a vetting process to decide if we want a relationship. Now, and then you have to decide what kind of relationship do you want? Do you want a day in, day out relationship? Do you want a relationship where you spend time doing social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in your personal and your professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either living together or getting married. I guess you can live together apart too. Is that the purpose of why we're dating? I think ladies, in particular, it's really important to really establish what's the purpose of dating someone. Dating is a vetting process to decide if this person's worthy of being in a relationship with them. You know, I had someone recently write me about uh, moving too fast in the dating process. Folks, I think we need to be moving fast. And what I mean to say is spend a lot of time together in a relatively short period of time to determine if you're compatible with one another. Now, all right, so you listen, you take one month off to basically explore another human being. Now, we could call that monogamy if you're not having sex with other people. We can call that exclusivity from someone. We can call that even commitment. What's so wrong with that? What's so wrong with making a commitment to someone for a 30-day period where you see each other a lot to determine if you're a good fit for one another? Our current dating process could be a six months to a year only to find out two people aren't compatible. And if they'd actually spent more concentrated time together, they would determine whether or not they're a good fit for one another. That's my invitation for folks. Because you get to see these behaviors, you get to see these personalities when we have a, an occasional dating process, when we're having long drawn out, long distance relationships, when people are spending more time on their cell phones than there are face to face, you don't really get to know a person. The best way to get to know a person quickly is either go on a long trip with them or live with them. That's when you get to really know how another person operates and how two people can work together in relationship. And so we look at these red flags as indicators of what will happen in the future. And at the same time, the best things to do when you see a red flag is address it because a red flag merely means ask more questions. And then within those questions, you can determine if, someone, if something is a deal breaker for you. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Okay, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this video. Please post a comment below. If this did resonate with you, um, folks, please tell your friends about our group called Midlife Love Mastery. Send them to my website, jonathanasley.com. Have them click the group coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye.